way of, of allowing free speech. Uh, in, in, in well, the issue, if you, um, I'll tell you, it's, this is my opinion. You, you've got this, uh, these very proud Americans mm -hmm. have the press, I, in my view, tap dancing. We, uh, you have to be uh, strong. You have to top a commie. If you put a communist on, you've got to win. And so the, the effort becomes more confrontational than, uh, than comprehension. Compre we, you lose, uh, I think you lose a lot when you, uh, when you, charge, when you charge the media with, being, uh, with, with the well, obligation of that, being tougher that than the communists. certainly communist. is not my position. My position is that you present a man who is not a journalist. Well, he is paid by the Soviet Union to be a spokesman. Mr. Rustin, trust the people to know no, that. What's no, going I to trust happen? The people They've got a, you'd be surprised no, how much common no, sense they have. No, I do not trust the people under the circumstances of that program. What's going to happen? I trust the people when all facts from all points of view are given. I can't do then that the on American one program. People, <laughs> then the American people will speak out. Now, let me just point out what the real problem with this what man's is. appearing was. The fact of the matter is, in the Soviet Union, the people have no ability to affect what happens. Illustration. We were in Vietnam, and many Americans were Protested against it. And we got on. Many Americans are now against our helping the Contras in Nicaragua. Yeah. The American people can speak on that issue, and they may end what is happening there as they did in we, Vietnam. There is not a single Soviet personality, including the man you had on the program, who has organized anything to resist what is happening in Afghanistan. Because they can't. It's and a close... Is a we talked about that, Good. Mr. Rustin. As long as that is positively well, clear, all right, well, I it am is. happy. It is. I'm glad you waited. Go ahead. Yes, hello. Um, I'm calling to say that I've been watching uh, TV for 25 years, probably 100,000 hours. I've seen one hour of, of any presentation of a Soviet point of view. And uh, I think that we, you know, I think we all can judge for ourselves as to the validity of what's being said to us. I think we're entitled to judge for ourselves. And, um, and I don't think... Uh, uh, and, and I've been hearing for years and years and years a laundry list of, you know, how many horrors have been committed by the Soviets. And I'm quite aware of that. But I would like to hear their, their view now. In a minute. Hang on. Yes, ma'am. Yes, I have a, a comment and a question. Please, My friends and I, many of us have been arrested in this country for demonstrating against things that are happening in this country. I don't see any difference between that and the Soviet Union. I agree we have more freedoms in this country but I don't see any reason why we should not allow someone to speak. And many of the people who speak for our country, it's nothing but propaganda. I think it's up to each of us individually to find out what is really happening. And also, can you tell me a little bit about your organization? Madam, mm -hmm. you could not be more wrong to say that we protest here and uh, this is like the Soviet Union. I have been arrested 24 times fighting the American government, my government, which I still respect. And every time I was in jail, there was an organization of people made up of Catholics, Protestants, Jews, black and white, to free me. In the Soviet Union, there is no organization right. to free Sakharov. So, so therefore what, Mr. Rustin? Therefore, Weston? there is a profound difference which Americans must understand. They do. I'm they not, do I'm understand. I'm not so that. sure when they are but presented it sounds to me like you're an saying... apologist from the Soviet Union uh, with nobody there to I, defend. I was there. Well, I don't think that's enough. Yeah, the problem is that, <laughs> Phil, yeah. may I say something? I'm not accusing you How of doing... You I'm know, not accusing you of doing a bad job. Yes, I you think are. you needed help. Yes, you did a lousy job. You did a lousy job. You think I did a lousy no, job? I don't you you did a lousy that. job, and you I'll know, tell you, I'll tell honestly, you. I can't. You, you, you did a lousy job. And, okay. and one, one of my hopes for this program is <laughs> yeah. that instead of, once again, you being allowed to come off as a good guy because you had a show full of critics of the Posner Show, and every time we beat you over the head, you go, yeah, yeah, and you look very repentant, one of my hopes is that you answer some of our questions. Now, I'd like to take this quote 
of yours on the Today Show. You said that Mr. Posner wants to save babies. Now, Mr. Posner's country, which he defends for money, is invading Afghanistan, which is slaughtering children as a matter of policy. Not accidentally, but as a matter of policy. This is a poster of a young Afghan boy. It's from the Free Afghanistan Committee. Had his arms blown off by a bomb disguised as a toy. There's another poster this group puts out featuring an Associated Press dispatch, a part of it, saying that thousands of grade school children, Afghan kids, are being kidnapped and taken to the Soviet Union to be turned into communists. Right. Now, you know what the Soviets are doing in Afghanistan, Mr. Donahue. You know they're, ch they're killing children, men, women, and children, yeah. livestock, scorching the earth as a matter of policy. Yeah. Why would you say that a man like this, who defends this kind of policy, wants to save babies? Can, uh, will, will you retract it? No. Why? Well, give me just a moment. Yes. First of all, the issue of Afghanistan was raised vigorously, not only on this program, but on the space bridge that we did with Mr. Posner, he from Leningrad, me from uh, Seattle. Incidentally, the criticism of Afghanistan, the immoral act of the invasion of Afghanistan by the Soviet military machine, which probably is more rigid than ours is, KAL is evidence of that, was raised on that program by none other than your semi-efficient host. And it aired in the Soviet Union. It aired. 160 million Soviets saw the criticism. That's one. Excuse me, I'm almost finished. Two, the, the behavior of, Af of, of the Soviet military bureaucracy in Afghanistan does not, does not disqualify all Soviet citizens from being described as interested in saving babies any more than all Americans would be disqualified from being so described because of America's military policy in Vietnam. All right. I believe, as I believe, that Vladimir Posner, as a human being, yes. genuinely wants to get past the divisions uh, that have developed between the two superpowers over the past right. several decades. And in that purpose, I am pleased to join him in this professional right. alliance okay. toward getting the right. people of both countries to talk to each other. It's a, it's a toe in the water. That's all we're doing. I am, not, I am not questioning the sincerity of your belief. I, be I said I am not questioning the sincerity of your belief. What I'm trying to do is understand it. And it seems to me that you just said that indeed you think it is possible, in this case it is actually happening, right. that a man can defend a policy yeah. which is killing babies, but yeah. the man himself can want to save babies. Well, I don't find that po okay. possible at all. Um, let me ask you... Um, that, what, that is an accurate well, sum summation of your position, that Mr. Posner does defend the policy of killing babies, but he really wants to save babies personally himself. Uh, as as uh, many Americans defended the policy of uh, military policy in Vietnam, and that also said they wanted to save that, babies. That was not a policy to kill babies on purpose. It is Soviet policy to kill babies, Mr. Okay. Donahue. So, you right. understand the distinction? Uh, I you... have been to Afghanistan four times inside. This little boy, I interviewed myself. I said, what happened to you? He said, I thought I was picking up a little green bird and exploded. And I have seen it myself, little dolls with incendiary devices. It's exactly what the Nazis were doing, the Soviets are doing today. Exactly. And this man who was here, Mr. Posner, is an apologist for the system. Are you there? I'm glad you waited. Go ahead. Yes, good morning. My father was born in the Soviet Union, and since, of course, he has immigrated to the United States, you, the people of the United States of America really do not know anything what is going on in the Soviet mm -hmm. Union unless they have firsthand from someone who has lived there. Right. I am glad my father came here. I am a first-born American citizen. My children are second-born, and we will continue to live in the United States of America. Right. Can we ever get together? From Is it possible? What my father has told me, and my my parents, uh, my father's family, no. Uh, we have good reason to fear the Soviets. So. Putting Posner on the Donahue show is an empty exercise. If anything, it makes this, it makes it worse. It lulls the people. It fools the people. All right, now I have one more question for you. Yes, sir. I assume then, to be consistent, you don't want Ronald Reagan to talk to Mikhail Gorbachev. It, to me, would be fruitful. There uh, would be no reason for so it. So let's just sit around and wait for the big one. No. It, because we can't talk. We can't talk. They're murderers. They're deceitful, so let's just sort of kind of wait 
and uh, we can do nothing. If you believe that, the prophecy will be fulfilled. Well, can, can you trust a convicted murderer? No. Phil, we're making a terrible mistake here. When we said we want to get together with the people, you should make an effort to get together with the real people, not with the government apologists or the government leaders. I applaud your effort to have a people-to-people -people dialogue. No, you but, don't. Yes, I do. But you must talk to the real Soviet people. You must, for example, approach the Independent Peace Committee, okay. not the official committee set up by the Soviet well, government. But, see, you, you must approach the feminist movement, half of which is in yeah. prison, okay. not these women that were chosen for you. Okay, but I, you must have a hookup with real Soviet citizens, uh, not the ones chosen for Ms. you. Mr. Grant. Then you will have a hookup and not a hiccup, which is what you had. Mr.